Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us tonight for our Maundy Thursday worship. Um, I've got just a few things to tell you before we get started. Uh, first of all is we had the celebration of life for Lucille Schmidt yesterday. These are some flowers that were given by the family in her memory, and I thought just in case we can't get flowers outside on Sunday um, because we're going to be outside and it might be windy, I wanted you to see them because they are quite beautiful. So those are in memory of Lucille Schmidt. Um, please keep the Jensen family in your prayers as they grieve. Um, the, the service that we did for her yesterday will be posted on St. Andrew's YouTube channel until Saturday. Uh, the family was okay with me posting it for a couple of days in case there was someone who wanted to see it but couldn't join us on um, yesterday, Wednesday. Um, but they did ask that I take it down before Easter. So you've got till Saturday to watch it if you would like to. And our prayers continue for Dave Hahn. Uh, Dave has been moved out of the COVID ICU into regular ICU. Um, they installed a trach today to help him breathe better. Um, he was fighting the one that went in his mouth, and so now he's got the trach, and he's doing much, much better. Um, looked good. I was able to go up and see him today, and he looked good and um, just very encouraged that he's, he's heading in the right direction. So please continue your prayers for Dave. They are most certainly working. Um, just a reminder that tomorrow night we have Good Friday right here on Zoom, 7 o'clock. Um, hope to see you then. And then Easter Sunday at 9 o'clock out in the parking lot. So um, they're forecasting very good weather, but maybe a little on the chilly side. And who knows what the wind is going to do. So if you come in person, we'll be on Zoom as well. But if you come in person, you might want to bring a, a blanket for your lap if you choose to sit outside. Or you can also stay in your car and just dial in the, the radio to where we'll be so you can hear me, and it's, it's just going to be so great to see you. I'm so excited. It's going to be really, really great to be together to celebrate our Lord's resurrection. But having said that, we have a lot to get through before we can celebrate. Tonight begins the three days, the triduum. Uh, we've got good, our Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and Holy Saturday. Um, to get through and, and walk with our Lord through the garden to the cross and to the tomb. Um, these are probably the holiest days of the year, um, certainly among my favorites, and I pray that um, these three days are a great blessing to you as we remember all the things that our Lord has done for us. We begin our worship tonight with the confession. Friends in Christ, in this Lenten season, we have heard our Lord's call to struggle against sin, death, and the devil, all that keeps us from loving God and each other. This is the, this is the struggle to which we were called at baptism. Within the community of the church, God never wearies of forgetting, forgiving sin and giving the peace of reconciliation. On this night, let us confess our sin against God and neighbor, and enter into the celebration of the great three days, reconciled with God and with one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed 
be the tie that binds our hearts in Christian love, the unity of heart and mind is like to that above, before grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Holy God, source of all love, on the night of his betrayal, Jesus gave us a new commandment to love one another as he loves us. Write this commandment in our hearts and give us the will to serve others as he was the servant of all, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also, also with, with you. The reading for tonight is from Exodus chapter 12. The Lord said to Moses and Arab, or Aaron in the land of Egypt. This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who will eat it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You, sh you shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night they shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened br bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roasted over the fire with its head, legs, and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until morning you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it, your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord, for I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On, on all the gods of Egypt I will execute. Judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague will destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. 
please read responsive with me, Psalm 116. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my supplications. For the, For the Lord, Lord has, has given, given ear to, to me whenever, whenever I, I call. call. How shall I repay the Lord for all the good things God has done for me? I will, I will lift, lift the, the cup of salvation and, and call on the name of the Lord. Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all God's people. Precious, Precious in, in your, your sight, sight, O Lord, Lord is, is the, the death, death of, of your, your servants. servants. O Lord, truly I am your servant. I am your servant, the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will, I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and, and call upon, upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all God's people. In the, in the courts, courts of the Lord's house, in, in the, the midst, midst of you, you O Jerusalem. Jerusalem. We are turning, Lord, to hear you. You are merciful and kind, slow to anger, rich in blessing, and with love to us inclined. The Holy Gospel for this Monday Thursday night is from the 13th chapter of John. Now, before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and to go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table took off his outer robe and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and wipe them with a towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, one who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me. And as I said to the Jews, so I now say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you should love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to, to you, you, O Christ. Christ. <clears throat> The television show Friends was a huge hit 
in the mid 90s and early 2000s. And if, if you happen not to watch it, these 10 seasons of this program, they told the story of these six best friends who promised always to be there for you. The storylines included this on again, off again romance between Ross and Rachel. There was Joey's unstable acting career and Phoebe's unpredictable and somewhat unconventional life. Then there was Monica and Chandler who fell in love in, in season five and they got married at the end of season seven. This marriage even made the list of the most unusual marriages on television. And there is a list of those things. Because no matter what they went through, neither one of them cheated on each other, neither one of them separated, and they did not divorce each other. Once they got married, they stayed married. And if you think about it, there are very few modern television marriages that are like that. Do you ever wonder what it would be like to have friends like these friends? Friends who promise to be there for you no matter what. Or maybe you do have a friend or two like that. <clears throat> Imagine this. Jesus had 12 friends who promised to be like that. Jesus had 12 friends who promised to stick by him no matter what what they promised to love him they promised to defend him they promised to be with him even to the point of death they swore that they would always be there for him but as we enter into the celebration of these three days we know that none of them were able to keep that promise and as soon as things got too dangerous, every single one bolted out of the garden. Every single one scattered into the night. A key part of being a good friend is love. We know there are three, works in, three words in the Greek that are used for our single word, love, in English. In Greek, we have eros, which talks about the physical love. It's where we get the word erotic. There's philio, which is friendship, like Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love. And then there's agape, which is the sacrificial love. That's the love that the friends had for each other, the I'll be there for you kind of love. And in the Gospel of John, Jesus speaks a lot about love, 39 times to be exact. And here are just a few. Jesus tells us that God agaped the, the world so much that he gave his only son. Jesus agape loved Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. Jesus taught that those who agape their lives will lose them. Jesus agaped his own, and he agaped them to the end. And he said, no one has greater agape than this, than to lay down their lives for their friends. And then in the portion that we read, there's the greatest commandment, which he gives us this night, to agape love one another, just as Jesus himself agape loves us. Everyone will know that you are my disciples, he says, if you agape one another. Jesus then demonstrates a little bit of the sacrificial agape love that night after dinner when he took off his outer robe and he took a towel and he tied it around his waist and then he proceeded to wash the feet of his disciples. This act seems to be well accepted by everyone except Peter. Peter protests because he thinks it is too unseemly it's inappropriate for the teacher to wash the feet of his students. But Jesus is very clear here. He says, if we truly love, if we truly agape others, then we show them 
that we love them. And one way we can do that is by serving others. Now for John, it's more than mere service. The true act of agape love, he says, is to lay down your life for your friends. And we see this true act of the agape love of God as Jesus is nailed to the cross. Jesus is about to be crucified for things that he never did. Jesus is about to be punished, not for his sins, but for ours. Jesus is about to take the heat for something that he never did. And taking the heat for something that you didn't do in order to save someone else? That is a true act of agape. And foot washing is just a small sign of that great love. Some of us shrink away from physical foot washing. Placing our feet in the hands of another is a very vulnerable thing to do. But washing the feet of another does not have to involve water. Foot washing can be any act of loving kindness. Foot washing can be any act of service. And the world sure needs more of that right now. I watch the evening news and I am horrified by what I see. The news is filled with acts of violence against peoples of color and indigenous peoples. It's filled with acts of violence and bullying against children in our schools. We hear about mass shootings, yet another in California. We hear about shootings there. We hear about shootings in nightclubs and movie theaters and grocery stores and strip malls. We hear about the, the continual, intentional exploitation of the poor by the rich. And it does not ever seem to stop. How can we wash the feet of people who have been hurt or victimized? And maybe the harder question is, how can we wash the feet of people who commit these crimes? How do we wash the people, how do we wash the feet of the people who really don't deserve to have them washed? Like Judas. Jesus knew that Judas was about to slink off into the night and betray him. And not only did Jesus wash his feet, Jesus shared his bread with him. Why? Why would Jesus do such a thing? He did this to give us a concrete example of what we are to do. And perhaps a way to start to overcome some of the violence and the injustice in our world is to do what Jesus did. Perhaps there is something to this teaching. There is something about this command to love. And perhaps if we do look to Jesus as an example, we can learn what it means to agape love one another. To agape love the stranger. Maybe we can learn to love people who are different than who we are. Maybe we can learn to love people who see the world a little differently than we do. Maybe we can learn to love people who were raised differently from how we were raised, and maybe we can learn to be okay with that difference, even if it scares us a little bit or if it makes us uncomfortable. Maybe we can learn to love the outcast and the forgotten and the alone. And maybe we can even learn to love the ones that we don't want to talk about or the ones that we don't want to think about. And remember, we are not called to save the world. Jesus already did that. But tonight, Jesus does call us and he calls all disciples to the discipline of agape love. 
We don't have to commit huge acts of kindness. Small ones count too. Mother Teresa often said, do small things with great love. And if we all did a little bit of agape together, wow, we could do a whole lot. If we all did a little bit together, we could change the world. Tonight, as we remember Jesus, we know he is facing the toughest night of his life. And by this time tomorrow, it will be all over. It'll be done. And of all nights, all nights, knowing what's coming, Jesus needed his friends tonight. He needed support. He needed love. He was love incarnate. He was agape love itself. And yet the 12 who were closest to him abandoned him in his darkest hour. One betrayed him to the authorities. Another denied even knowing him at all. And yet, even so, Jesus loved his own and he loved them to the end. Jesus loved those 12 anyway, even though they scattered in fear. We all need friends, like the ones on that TV show. But those six characters, they're, they're fictional. They're not real. Such friends as were on that TV show do not exist, or they are extremely rare. But I'll tell you this. We do have one friend who is not fictional. We have one friend who is very, very real. We have a friend who loved the world. He loved his friends. He loved strangers. He loved outsiders. He loved the clean. He loved the unclean. He agape loves you and he agape loves me when we stand with him and he agape loves us when we act like we do not even know him. He loved all of us to take on our sins and take them away so that you and I would never again know what it's like to be separated from so great a love. What a friend this is. What a friend we have in Jesus. And what an amazing example he gives us of agape love and loyalty. Jesus did for them and for us what his own friends could not do for him that night. Jesus stuck to the plan and was obedient to God all the way to the cross. And in that obedience, Jesus showed that great agape love to us and to the world. And tonight, my friends, he calls us to do the same. Amen.
Dear friends, we are God's people by baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us join our hearts and our minds together in prayer. Holy God, what a night. What a night this is. You have such a long journey before you. A very, very long night. And yet, as long as it is, it will be quickly over. As you gathered with your friends this night, you told them a very important teaching that we are to agape love one another, that we are to care for one another with a sacrificial love, the same love that you show us from the cross. Help us to do that. In many ways, we're very good at it. In other ways, not so much. When it's hard, when it's scary, when we've been hurt, it is hard to love. Lord, we lift all of those hard things before you tonight. We ask that you take them from us. Help us to release them so that we can learn to love. Continue to mold us and shape us in your image. Mold us and shape us into the image of love that we can be your witnesses in Lincoln, in Nebraska, and to the ends of the earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, Lord God, for your church throughout the world, especially in these three days. We pray, Lord, that we would pause and pay attention to give deep thought to the meaning of these three days. Use us, unite us, set us on fire, and help us to be your witnesses to the ends of the earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the nations of the world, particularly places that are living with injustice and, and fear. Bless the leaders with wisdom and discernment. Help them to be bridge builders, that they can forge relationships with each other and work on being united for the sake of their people. And among your people where division has grown deep, we pray for your Holy Spirit to enter in, to melt our stubborn hearts and fill them with hearts of love so that when we look upon our neighbor's face, we may not see an enemy, but we may see you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our nation. Our nation is hurting again. And it is deeply troubling to my soul and to my spirit that I use that word again. Here we are again. How long, O oh Lord? How long will we suffer in this way? Be with the people in California who are hurting this night, who are scared. Be with people in Boulder who are hurting and scared. Be with the folks in Florida who are hurting and scared. Lord, we ask that you would replace our fearful hearts with hearts of love. We know there is a better way than this. 
your way is far better than the way that we're doing it. Help us to find your way and help us to follow it. Bind up the brokenhearted this night and assure them of your presence and your peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray this night for the sick, the sad, and the lonely. We pray for families who are grieving, especially the Jensen family. We pray for those who are dying, that their journey home to you would be painless and peaceful. We pray for all those who suffer from COVID and those who are recovering, like David Hahn. We pray for their healing and their restoration to health. We pray for all those who are known to you, who are in need of your loving care, and those who are known to us, whom we lift before you right now. Thank you, Lord, for hearing these names of our beloved, those whom we carry in our hearts, those who are very dear to us, and thank you for entering into their lives and granting their every need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank and praise you, O oh God, for the ways that you continue to use St. Andrews, even in this pandemic. Whether it's the building or activities or ministries of the month or gathering shoes or gathering food items or whatever it might be, you have used us in an amazing way and you have heard our prayers to, to allow us to be a force in our community and for that we give you thanks. Please continue to use us that we can point to you as the source and the reason why we are people who are reaching out and sharing grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O oh God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting that you will hear and answer these prayers that we lift to you in the mighty and amazing name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. My friends, on this night, on this very night, our Lord gathered with his friends and he said, this is my body, which is given for you. He broke the bread and he gave it to them. And he said, do this. And when you do it, I want you to remember me. And in the same way, he took the cup, he gave thanks, and he told them all to drink it. And he said, this is my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you do this, I want you to remember me. Lord, we ask that you remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, Amen who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. O Lamb of God, you bear the sin of all the world away. You suffer death to save. Have mercy now, we pray. O Lamb of God, you bear the sin of all the world away. You set us free from guilt and grave. Have mercy now, we pray.
Jesus said, I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have agape loved you, you also should agape love one another. By, by this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have agape love, or if you agape love one another. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, in a wonderful sacrament, you strengthen us with the saving power of your suffering, death, and resurrection. May this sacrament of your body and blood so work in us that the fruits of your redemption will show forth in the way we live. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me, from the words of my groaning? Oh, my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer, and by night, but find no rest. Yet you are holy enthroned on the praises of Israel. In you our ancestors trusted. They trusted, and you delivered them. To you they cried and were saved. In you they trusted and were not put to shame. But I am a worm and not human, scorned by others despised by the people. All who see me mock at me. They make mouths at me, and they shake their heads. Commit your cause to the Lord. Let him deliver. Let him rescue the one in whom he delights. Yet it was you who took me from the womb. You kept me safe on my mother's breast. On you I was cast for my birth. And since my mother bore me, you have been my God. Do not be far from me, for trouble is near, and there is no one to help. Many bulls encircle me, strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They open wide their mouths at me like a ravening and roaring lion. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted within my breast. My mouth is dried up like a pot shard, and my tongue sticks to my jaws. You lay me in the dust of death. For dogs are all around me. A company of evildoers encircles me. My hands and feet have shriveled. I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my clothes among themselves and for my clothing they cast lots. But you, O oh Lord, do not be far away. O oh, my help, come quickly to my aid. Deliver my soul from the sword, my life from the power of the dog. Save me from the mouth of the lion. From the horns of the wild oxen, you have rescued me. I will tell of your name to my brothers and sisters. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you offspring of Jacob, glorify him. 
Stand in awe of him, all you offspring of Israel. For he did not abhor or despise or abhor the affliction of the afflicted. He did not hide his face from me, but heard when I cried to him. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will pay before those who fear him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. And all the families of the nations shall worship before him. For dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. To him, indeed, shall all who sleep in the earth bow down. Before him shall bow all who go down to the dust, and I shall live for him. Posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord and proclaim his deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying that he has done it. 